So today we're going to walk through some more further stats one revision, this time looking at the central limit theorem. So this is chapter 5, using the official here at Excel further stats 1 textbook. So be sure to follow along if you've got a textbook. We're looking at central limit theorem, so one of the key points of the central limit theorem is that if we have a random sample of size n of any distribution, and we say our mean, so I'm in red randomly, but if our mean is mu, and our variance is sigma squared, well, this is dis uh, normally distributed, or approximately distributed using the normal distribution as mu, and then it'll be sigma squared divided by n, my sample size in that case. So any sample size of n. So let's actually look at some questions for central limit theorem. And what you'll find in a lot of cases with these questions is they'll take into account other contexts, so stuff like discrete random variables, other topics, and they will mix the other probabilities and distributions together. So stuff like the Poisson, binomial, geometric, for example. So this one here, as you can see, straight away, it's looking at the discrete random variables. So this is chapter one from, um, or the discrete random variables are chapter one. This obviously is chapter five, so it's assumed that you've already covered this. So I'm going to assume that as well, but I'll walk through it as we go through it. So question seven from exercise 5a. So we're looking here now at this random variable x, which has this probability distribution shown in the table. Pi just asks us to find the value of k, so hopefully nice and easy. All you've got to remember is that the sum of the probabilities must add up to one. So the sum of the probabilities is equal to one. So if you add these up, so 0.1 plus 3k and then another k, so that's 4k, plus 0.3, must be equal to 1. So we'll start simplifying here, 4k plus 0.4 is equal to 1, so therefore 4k is equal to 0 0.6, oops, 0 0.6, so therefore k must be equal to 0 0.15, right? Nice and straightforward. So now when we go into part B, we're told that we have a random sample of 100 observations. And this is when we, we have to use the central limit theorem now. So for six marks, we have to use this, the central limit theorem to estimate the probability that the mean of these observations is greater than three. So we've been discrete random variables. To work out the mean, so that would be the E of X, the expectation of X. All we do is we times our X by its respective probability. So for example, it's going to be, so this is the mean in this case, which is going to be 0 times 0 0.1 plus 2 times 3 lots of k, so that's 0 0.45 plus 3 times 0 0.15 and I'm just doing the camera in a room, be 5 times 0 0.3, okay, and then once we sum that up, collect all that, that's our mu value, so mu What's it going to be equal to? It's going to be 0 plus 0 0.9 plus 0 0.45 plus two, uh, sorry, 1.5, which when you add all that together, that'll give you 2.85. 2.85. Okay. So that's mu. So now we've got mu. Remember, we need the variance as well. So to work out the variance for um, discrete random variables, in this case, it's going to be e of x squared, e of x squared, minus, now it would normally be e of x all squared, but because we've already got that here, that's our mu, we're just going to do minus mu squared, so minus 2.85 squared. So now we just need e of x squared. So to get e of x squared, if we just do that over here, e of x squared, It's the exact same as e of x, but we just square the x value first, and then just do the same summation, and then that's your value. So it's going to be 0 squared times 0 0.1, so that's just going to be 0. It's going to be 2 squared times 3 lots of 0 0.15, so it's going to be 4 times um, 0 0.45. So if I add all these up straight away, that's going to be at 1.8 plus 9, because it's 3 squared, times 0 0.15, so that's 1.35. And then finally, 5 squared, so 25 times 0 0.3. So basically 30% of 25, so that'd be 7.5. So add all them up together. And what you'll get is 10.65. So that's 10.65. So now all I've got to do is use the formula here for the variance. So that's e of x squared, which is 10.65. 0 0.65. 
minus 2.85 squared. Do that on your calculator, and what you'll get is 2.5275. Okay, so that's my variance for this question. So now we've got everything we need, now we can use the central limit theorem to estimate the probability. So what we are looking for now is the probability that x bar, so I'm just going to rub some of this out actually. So I just uh, erase all ink, I'll write it down again. So my mean is 2.85 and my variance is 2.5275. So now we can approximate this distribution. So we're going to say x bar is approximately distributed normally with a mean of 2.85 and a variance now. So just be careful which way we're going to get this. Remember it's sigma squared divided by n. So n in this case is 100 because it's a sample of 100. So it's going to be 2.5275 divided by 100. So that's my distribution. Now all I want to do is just use my graphical calculator. If you're doing further stats one and you don't have a graphical calculator, I don't really know what you're doing. You need one. Um, it's essential. So put this on your calculator now. So I'm looking for the probability that x bar is greater in this case than 3. So greater than 3. Okay. So once you put this on your calculator, and make sure once you're doing this on your calculator, you need to square root this. Because remember, you, on your calculator, you're doing it for the standard deviation. Whereas this here, in this case, this is the variance, so it needs to square root for calc. Need to square root on calc. Okay, otherwise you're going to get the incorrect answer for that. So once you do all this on your calculator, what you'll get is 0.1727. And that's it. So that's your probability there, or our estimate of the probability. And then finally for part C, it just asks you to comment on the accuracy of your estimate. Now, Remember, the, the central limit theorem only gives you an approximation. So, central limit theorem is approximation. But, because we have quite a large sample, we have a sample of 100. But we have a large sample. What we can say is that this is probably going to be a pretty good, ac like, it's going to be quite accurate. So, but large sample means more accurate. So we can say it's going to be pretty accurate. And you only have to make a little comment like that. Basically what you're saying is that it's a large sample, so it means it's going to be more accurate. So that's the first question there done. So that was nine marks in total, and that's a pretty standard um, exam question from the, the new further stats one exams. So let's move on to the next one. So this is taken from the old edXL S3. So this is the old spec. But let's have a look at it. This is quite a straightforward one. So here now we've got a sample of size 8, we've got the mean, we've got the standard deviation. We don't even have to do anything else, we just need to work out the probability. So let's just write everything down. So n is 8, so n is 8, my mu is 55, and my standard deviation is 3. So I'm going to square that to get my variance, so that's going to be 9. So let's write down our approximate distribution. So remember x bar normal and my mean is 55 we've already wrote all that down and my variance so remember it's variance divided by sample size so it's 9 over 8 so nice and straightforward so now again just use your graphical calculator nice and easy this question is extremely quick so we're looking for the probability that x bar is greater than 57 remember again that you need to square root this guy so remember to square root So remember to square root when you're doing it on your calculator. Okay, so that's only when you do it on your calculator, obviously. So once you do that on your calculator, what you'll get here is 0 0.0297. It's a three significant figures. So it's a three significant figures. Okay, so five marks for that. Sometimes if you get these questions, they're going to be really easy, something like this. But more often than not, it's going to be pretty similar to what we had with the last one, like that, where it's going to be using discrete random variable or a different distribution. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. This time now, we're back to the further stats one textbook. This is exercise 5b, question 5. So we've got a town that's hit by thunderstorms per month on average. So 
straight away, we're not given the distribution for this one. We've got to kind of figure that out. Now, because we're talking about a rate here, so we're looking at per month, or, you know, it's per a time frame, so it's per month, because we're looking at time frames, it's got to be Poisson, right? So, my lambda here is going to be equal to 3. So, lambda is equal to 3. Now, part A is just a simple Poisson distribution question. So, part A, we want the probability that there are exactly four thunderstorms next month. So, this is probably that x is equal to 4. So, you should have a graphical calculator, and if you do, just put your, your value into there. But if you don't, just use the formula, it's pretty straightforward. But what you will get is 0 0.1680. Okay, so that's your first two marks, really nice, straightforward. Now, part B is where we need to use the central limit theorem. And notice, because we've got Poisson now, we need to get this approximated. So, it's in your formula book, but remember, for a Poisson distribution, your mean is just simply your lambda value. So mu in this case is just going to be what our lambda is, which is 3. And your variance is just lambda again. So the variance is just lambda, which is 3. So nice and straightforward for this one. So mu is equal to 3, and so is my variance. So let's write down our approximate distribution. So again, x bar distributed normally. My mean is 3. I remember it's going to be variance divided by sample size. Now, the sample size for this, if you're unsure, so let's read what the question wants. So we want to estimate the probability that over the course of a year, the average number of thunderstorms each month is at most 2.5. So that's the key bit, the fact that it's over the course of a year. So that means our sample is going to be 12, because we're measuring this in months, right? So we're looking at months. If we're looking at a year, obviously 12 months in a year. So my n is 12. My variance is obviously the 3 that we've already got. So 3 over 12 are a quarter, right? So what I can do now is work out my probability. So it's probably that x bar. Now, because it's at most 2.5, that is less than or equal. So less than or equal. So just be careful you get that the right way around. Less than or equal to 2.5. Now, at this point, you're on your uh, normal function of your graphical calculator. Plug these values in with this distribution here. So this distribution, plug all this in, and what you'll get is 0 0.159. And that's the three significant figures again. And it's as easy as that, honestly. It's a really nice chapter, but it's very fundamental for a lot of further stats. Um, and especially if you're going to even stats or maths further on to university level, very fundamental. So let's move on to the very final question here. This is from the review exercise now. So review exercise one, question 25. So it's towards the end of the review exercise. Now what we've got is we've got a report on the health and nutrition of a population, which basically is looking at the mean height um, and then obviously the standard deviation as well to do with that. So we've got an n here of 100. So let's just write everything that we've got. We've got n is equal to 100. Our mean, so our mu value is um, 90. And my variance What will that be? So that is, so it's the standard deviation is five, so my variance is twenty-five. Okay, so now let's write down our approximate distribution. So I'd always kind of do it step by step. Write down all your information that you've got, and then go from there. Write down your approximate distribution. So x bar again. And then obviously input all your, your values. So mean of ninety. Again, it's going to be sigma squared, so my variance divided by the sample size, so twenty-five over a hundred. Okay, so again, we get another value of a quarter here. So, we're looking, so that was part A, sorry, so that was the distribution, which we we did accidentally, um, I was kind of setting everything up, but part A, that's our distribution, so this is the distribution. So this is the distribution, this here. Now part B, using this distribution, we have to find the probability that the sample mean height is at least 91 centimetres. So, we've got our distribution. This is dead straightforward now. Just put it into your calculator. So, make sure you can get the, the inequality the correct way around. So, because this is at least 91 centimetres, we're looking for the probability that x bar is greater than or equal to 91. Okay? Use these values here. Just remember, square root that value there when you plug it into your calculator. So, as long as you don't forget to square root, you'll get a sensible answer. Plug this in. 
and you get 0 0.02 2 8 and there we have it so that was the final question from this chapter it's a pretty brief chapter overall and hopefully it's been quite straightforward i don't think there's anything too tricky for this chapter but it's very important for stats overall so if you find this helpful be sure to subscribe uh, like the video and keep checking out all the further stats one revision material